everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. It's good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. The White House continues to push back against reports the president knew about intelligence, which claimed Russia was paying the Taliban to target American troops. And while the president tweets denials, the White House is briefing lawmakers on allegations laid out in the report. During an interview with Fox Business Network this afternoon, the president doubled down when asked how he would respond to Russia putting a bounty on U.S. forces. If there is ever a scenario in which Russia puts a bounty on U.S. troops, how would you respond? First of all, they'd hear about it, but we never heard about it because intelligence never found it to be uh, of, the, of that level where it would rise to that. When you bring something into, into a president, and I see many, many things, and I'm sure I don't see many things that they don't think rose to the occasion. This didn't rise to the occasion. And from what I hear, and I hear it pretty good, uh, the intelligence people didn't even, many of them didn't believe it happened at all. I think it's a hoax. I think it's a hoax by the newspapers and the Democrats. The president's former national security advisor is also responding to reports Mr. Trump dismissed intelligence about the threat to U.S. troops. In an interview for The Takeout, John Bolton told CBS News chief Washington correspondent Major Garrett that the president does not value intelligence and is not receptive to new facts. Every president consumes intelligence in a different way. Ronald Reagan did one way, George H.W. Bush another. Uh, it, it, the, the purpose of the, the briefing process is to meet the particular uh, needs uh, of the president and, and pre present it to him in the way that best suits his, his desires. The problem with Donald Trump is, is not that he uh, is not receptive to one means or another. He's just not receptive to, to new facts, the intelligence briefings don't communicate as much information as they should. We tried to think of ways to change it. I think it was probably a doomed effort. Uh, but it's, it's not that the intelligence community is failing. It's that the president does not value this information as highly as his predecessors have and as highly as he should. National security and foreign policy expert Asha Castleberry joins me now. She's a U.S. Army veteran and a former fellow at the U.S. Mission to the United Nations. We also want to note Asha is a Democratic candidate for New York's 17th Congressional District. Welcome, Asha. Thanks for joining us. What do you make of John Bolton's assertion there, that the president does not value intelligence briefings in the same way his predecessors have? Well, it further corroborates that he's not necessarily fit for office. Uh, and it is um, very uh, disturbing to see that he has disregarded intelligence, known about the protection of his troops in Afghanistan, and, uh, and continue to uh, show his support or tilt more towards, you know, working with the Russians instead of should have been confronting the Russians about these uh, bounties, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, um, excuse me, as far as uh, targeting U.S. troops. So we expect from a commander in chief to ensure that he gets to the bottom of this and making sure that the Russians do not uh, do that to U.S. troops. We expect that from the commander in chief. So it's very unfortunate that, you know, the foundation of this is, is a disregard from the intelligence. And I'm, I'm, I am happy that uh, uh, um, former National Security Advisor John Bolton has actually come out and, and actually been very truthful about the situation. So the current national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, said the raw intelligence was given to U.S. and coalition forces as soon as it came in. Let's listen to more of what he had to say about that earlier today. The real story here, and that's, that, that's what's, what's so sad, and we're in such a polarized time now, the real story is that we did everything right. When this raw intelligence came in, Gina Haspel put out a statement that, that I haven't seen re reported. No one's reporting. I don't see the New York Times with a headline on it. She said, we distributed this raw intelligence, even though it wasn't verified, because we were concerned about it. We gave it to U.S. forces and we gave it to coalition forces to make sure they could have force protection. So, Asha, what does that suggest to you about the seriousness of the threat to U.S. troops? Well, if, if that did actually play out, then, you know, we do need more force protection as a result of these intelligence updates. But everything starts from the commander-in-chief. That's the one that sets the tone. 
that's the one that plays a big part in dictating the global leadership around the world. The, 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 um, the message coming from the commander in chief is so powerful. So regardless of what Gina Hassel or anyone else did, we want to hear from the commander in chief that, that he must condemn the behavior coming from the Russians targeting uh, U.S. troops as far as dealing with what we, what's going on in Afghanistan. And this also undermines the current strategy. If the president of the United States is really pushing for for a peace deal with the Taliban, he cannot right now negotiate with the Taliban if they're in, in, uh, involved in these activities that are targeting U.S. troops. So, again, this is all over the place. It's incoherent. But the tone starts from the commander-in-chief. So on that point, does O'Brien's response there undercut the president's claim that these reports are a quote-unquote hoax? Uh, somewhat, yes. And in fact, uh, again, what we've seen in this administration several times, that there is no consensus within the administration when it comes to a claim like this. And it's unfortunate because it's a very serious claim where you have the National Security Advisor saying that they had taken this uh, a bit, you know, a lot more serious versus uh, President Trump, who says, hey, this is a hoax. You know, there needs to be a consensus among the administration. And, you know, in terms of our national security, everybody needs to be all aligned saying that this is, this is not something we should accept from the Russians. We need to confront the Russians about this and also the Taliban to ensure that our troops are safe as we are negotiating uh, a peace deal or an exit strategy in Afghanistan. Uh, help us understand the, the process here, because O'Brien also said that a senior CIA official who briefs the president chose not to verbally brief him on this particular intelligence. Is there a scenario where the CIA would provide this kind of information to U.S. forces, but not to the president? Uh, you know, it's, it's all in the intelligence community. Intelligence is uh, shared among multiple agencies. So whatever the troops see, the president of the United States should also receive at the same time. So, um, you know, I, I disagree that, you know, that this was not given to the president of the United States. I believe that this was an alarming update and that everybody within the National Security Council saw it and had to do something about it. And just like what John Bolton said, he briefed him back in March 2019 about this update. This should have been, uh, you know, uh, openly condemned. Uh, saying that the Russians cannot engage with the Taliban. So I believe that there was a full awareness among the National Security Council, regardless of you at the Department of Defense, you were in the intelligence community, or you at the State Department, this is something that was known and it should have been uh, addressed immediately. Well, I want to play some more of what John Bolton had to say about this and then get your response. Let's listen to that. You don't take everything into the president. But when American troops are threatened by an adversary like Russia in this way, uh, if, uh, if, if there's any indication this is an ongoing operation, something the president needs to take into account. He'd be perfectly justified in saying, OK, I, I want more information before I act on it. And it, it has just become the intelligence community's number one priority. But to say, we don't give it to him until we're completely satisfied, I, if, uh, that, that didn't reflect how I operated. So, Asha, how do you see it? Do you agree with that? Or is there a need to wait and gather more information when it comes to intel with broad national security implications like this? Absolutely. I, I agree that uh, the President of the United States should have uh, requested for more information to see what would be his next COA, his next course of action. And prior to hearing about this, we knew uh, there was a lot of speculation that the Russians were actually arming the Taliban or arming uh, insurgent groups in Afghanistan. So uh, we, you know, due to prior knowledge, we, there, you know, we should not be too surprised that this is what's going on in terms of, of offering bounties to, to target U.S. troops. So I think there was uh, enough cushion there for the President of the United States to request for more information, especially if you're engaged with negotiations. And also, what we know, too, is that the Russians have their own strategy trying to close up Afghanistan. So the Russians have their strategic interest to have their equities in Afghanistan. So, of course, they're going to be engaged in the environment and push for what they want in terms of how Afghanistan should look in the future. So there's a high level of competition, especially now that we're in a great power competition era. 
So, of course, the President of the United States should definitely request for more information so he can actually get to a course of action that was told, that was definitely needed uh, immediately. Finally, Asha, Russia's history in Afghanistan does stretch back decades. What is it you think the Russians want now? And how would colluding with the Taliban advance their goals? I, I think the Russians definitely want to make sure they have their stake in it. Uh, as, as we are involved in the great power competition era, they definitely want the United States out. But as the United States advances out, they want to make sure whoever is in power is in favor of Russian interests. They prioritize Russia over the United States so they can have control politically, economically in Afghanistan. So by doing that is to work closely with the Akhani uh, network, the Taliban, all these different groups to make sure that they extend themselves, they expand their influence in Afghanistan. And the United States will be the big time loser in this after investing so much money in Afghanistan for almost 20 years and be the big laugh. We are again in a, a great power uh, competition era. And the United States has to be more vigilant, not naive on what the Russians are doing in Afghanistan. And they feel more, more, uh, more um, aggressive about it. And you're seeing that in the rest of the Middle East, where they're selling foreign military cells. So many of our strategic alliances there. And also you're seeing this play out in Syria, where they're really trying to ensure their interests over the United States. So the playing, the playing field right now is to make sure the United States lessen their, their leadership or their power in other countries, and they'd be able to advance their power and determine the outcome of these wars, like in Afghanistan and Syria, as well as in Iraq. Asha Castleberry. Asha, thanks very much for sharing your perspective with us. You're welcome.